This is a picture of ex-VMware CEO Diane Green presenting at the first VMworld in 2004. The event was held in California and had 1,500 attendees. VMworlds have grown massively since then, and I believe at the last VMworld 2020, there was over 20,000 attendees. My name's James King. I'm a senior technical account manager of VMworld. And I'm, what I'm hoping to do today is just to summarize the key announcements. So as you can see on the right hand side here, you've got the taglines over the years and all the key announcements at each VMworld. This is just a standard forward looking statement just to say that there's gonna be mention of strategy and vision. So some things that are potentially in the pipeline. Now, what VMworld did differently this year was shifting the focus to different personas. We generally work with technical people, but we also need to consider the needs of CIOs who are going to be looking at agility and innovation. And this is where multi-cloud and app modernization is going to help. Organizations are focusing on software, which puts the developer in the driving seat. And lastly, the CISO. So it's no secret that VMware is moving to become a security company with acquisitions like Carbon Black, Last Line, and Octarine. Our vision remains the same, delivering a digital foundation for our customers to run their businesses. Now, apologies, as many of you might have seen this slide before, I presented the exact same slide at my VMworld Update 2019 at a VMUG. But what I wanted to emphasize is that our vision has been this way for more than six years. Many companies are having to change their vision every year or two to cope with the changes in the market. Ours is fixed and with our R&D and acquisitions, we're delivering on our vision of any application to traditional cloud native, SaaS on any cloud, hybrid edge, private, public or telco cloud, and for you to be able to access from any device, a smart car or any device that's got an operating system. Always with the three padlocks over to the right as we look to deliver intrinsic security. I've arranged our acquisitions in line with the previous slide. Heptio was acquired in 2018, which brought us Joe Bader, one of the key founders of Kubernetes while he was at Google. Uh, he now works for VMware R&D. Bitnami is an application and service catalog that's gonna empower hyperscalers, the public cloud providers to deliver open source apps. And Pivotal, which is a big part of our app modernization vision with Tanzu. Now, I won't go through the list, but one acquisition made Jordan VMworld was Saltstack which is going to broaden our automation capabilities and includes software, config management, network and security automation and infrastructure automation. VMware CEO Pat Gelsinger presented this puzzle slide of VMworld and this could be a session in its own right. In it, we're taking your business, taking your apps and your data and we're applying our app modernization portfolio. But of course, the journey differs from customer to customer. So we cover multi-cloud, which works hand in hand with app modernization. Customers that are leveraging services like Azure, AWS can accelerate this. And then we can build customers' digital workspace with Workspace ONE and Horizon. And of course, all of this needs an overlay network. So we've announced that we're combining our virtual cloud networks, combining NSX, Vela Cloud, Avi, all into one platform. And intrinsic security, it's not a product, it's architected across everything that we're doing. I know this slide's very busy, um, but it's a slide of all of our solutions. So obviously the number has grown massively over the years. So to simplify this, uh, here you can see products mapped to the five pillars that we've just saw. So this enables us to look at your applications and see how we can modernize your applications within the top, the Tanzu portfolio. We can take it on a multi-cloud journey with our partners. We can provide VCN services, so not only switching and routing but load balancing and edge network intelligence and we've got our digital workspace and horizon with workspace one we can combine our security capabilities like ips and ids and network detection and more if we look at what vmware has announced recently we'll see that it's all built around three pillars the first pillar is app modernization. That's because that's the industry trend. Many companies are becoming software companies, building and running bespoke applications. You can build your own software. If you're a bank, you can create an app that connects you to your customers. And you can sell that to your competition. You can create new streams of revenue from software, which was developed in-house or through a third party. 
and cloud and cloud native architecture have lowered the barrier to the entry for building new applications. It's difficult to match applications to the right underlying infrastructure. So with the pace of innovation and the creation of the next generation apps, app modernization isn't going away. It's something that we want to help our customers with. If we look at the journey for our customers, obviously each is different. We might be making the most of our legacy apps with plans in the future to modernize. Sometimes a lift and shift to an AVS or VMC solutions enough where we can still get the benefits of modern services. Maybe we can optimize a bit. You know, we can invest a bit of time and money to containerize a legacy app, or we can replatform. We can rewrite our code to match a modern platform. Or we might want to offer microservices to provide the highest levels of agility or build new services in the public cloud. We have to take all of these things into consideration. And VMware build their portfolio to answer these problems for our customers. We're in a unique position to help you across both dimensions. So working from your existing infrastructure up or working from your applications down. With our acquisitions like so Heptio, Bitten Army and Pivotal, we needed to split into two sections. So infrastructure is what we know. We find it easy to talk to engineers and architect, architects about this. App modernizations where we need to speak directly to developers and how we can help to productionize applications quickly with Tanzu application services to give you the speed, but also the infrastructure stability. Now, if we look at the infrastructure layer, it's important to start with your existing workloads. So we've got vSphere for that, obviously. To be able to support containers at scale and to retain operator control of policy where while freeing developers through self-service with embedded Kubernetes into vSphere. We focused on how developers interact with the infrastructure teams. So by putting Kubernetes into our SDDC story, we've made life easier for developers. Kubernetes is widely used across the industry. When your best minds are spending so much of their time maintaining the current environments, it's hard to innovate and build for the future. But if you can unify your infrastructure automate your operations, then you can have, you can strengthen your existing foundation. You get rid of a lot of the day-to-day -day headaches and you'll be able to redirect your attention to the business challenges that you want to solve, like increasing agility and uptime, etc. Originally, Kubernetes was only available in VCF, but it's now available in vSphere. Um, been many advances in vSphere, which we'll hear all about. Um, in terms of scale, we have the concept of a monster VM, so one VM um, with 24 terabytes of RAM, 768 virtual CPUs. So if you're using like a SAP HANA or a huge Oracle database, if you couldn't virtualize this before, now you can. We've also increased the maximum cluster size from 64 to 96. And we've also wanted to simplify operations. So now vSphere Lifecycle Manager can update vSphere, vSAN, NSX. It's got hardware integration as well. So you can patch uh, hardware drivers. Um, we've added HCI Service Mesh, where we can disaggregate storage across multiple clusters and share resources. We've added Lifecycle Management for vSAN. Um, we've expanded file services, so now if you have a if you have a VDI environment, you can use a built-in file service with vSAN to share files between desktops. And we combine all of this in Cloud Foundation. So the latest version being 4.1, uh, vSAN, vSphere, and NSX. We can now have VCF remote clusters. So for the times where you just need compute out on the range, we don't want a full SDDC at your branch. You can now manage that easily and centrally with VCF remote clusters. So looking back at, uh, at modernization with VCF, we've embedded Tanzu Kubernetes grid into vSphere, making it accessible to your VI admins, meaning that they can provision Kubernetes clusters using the same tools and processes that you use to provision VMs. If you have vSphere 7, your developers can have self-service uh, vSphere pods built on the hypervisor with network services if NSX is available or storage services if you've got vSAN, all managed by your operations teams. 
announced that VM Wales was Tanzu Editions, aimed at giving you access to the right capabilities from the Tanzu portfolio to meet your needs. Uh, the Tanzu portfolio has grown rapidly and we want to make the choice easy for you. So in the same way that we do VCF today, we've got standard, advanced and enterprise. If we need intelligent operations, then we can go standard. If we want private cloud, we can go advanced. And if we want DevOps uh, multi-cloud, then we can go enterprise. So we have 26 products in, the, in Tanzu, but now you don't need to focus on individual products as they'll all be bundled in the additions. Each of the additions is a superset of the additions below it, and you can guide customers to the right set of capabilities to meet the needs. vSphere with Tanzu is the fastest way to get started with Kubernetes workloads. It's simple and it's a fast way to deliver Kubernetes to developers from existing vSphere environments without the need to virtualize networking. You can extend VDS support for Kubernetes clusters and the supervisor clusters, and you can make use of integrated L4 load balancing or bring your own L4 load balancing uh, using HA proxy, and you can bring your own block and file storage. Optimize for small to medium scale deployments, for example, so 10 to 25 Tanzu Kubernetes clusters. These are typical sizes where there's actual scale and limits for the product are much higher. In vSphere with Tanzu, we can leverage the security features of vSphere with SSO and role-based access. With VCF with Tanzu, you can get the benefits of NSX with micro segmentation and all the advanced security within NSX. And the Tanzu vision is to have this across all platforms, on-prem, public cloud, and edge. By combining vSphere 7 with Tanzu, we can start today with your on-premise infrastructure and you can extend into the public cloud if it suits your business. Going from the application down is where we need to support your developers with the speed of innovation, automating the path to production. And this is where we have Spring services, which is already used by millions of developers worldwide. Spring helps developers to focus on code rather than infrastructure so they can more readily adopt microservices, uh, cloud native apps, serverless apps, and build Java apps uh, with the Spring development framework. And the best way to get those applications into production is with a tightly integrated and automated platform, which is why we've announced the Tanzu application service. The Tanju application service can help to get the developers a fast track taking an app from a staging environment into a production environment, running anywhere on-prem, public cloud, or the edge. And these capabilities are available um, as modular services for customers that want to assemble their software supply chain. If we want to deliver better customer experiences and real business impact, we know that it takes more than technology alone. It requires deep expertise, so VMware have pivotal labs who can spend time at you and help to modernize your apps and build new cloud native apps. They can help you to look at your existing infrastructure and how you're going to run those next generation applications. It's certainly not only VMware's experts that are going to help achieve this, it's our community of hundreds of partners to help modernize applications. If we jump to multi-cloud, our multi-cloud strategy is mature. We're the only vendor that can run any application in any cloud, AWS, Azure, Oracle, Alibaba, IBM, and we can help you to move from cloud to cloud or HCX. The entire portfolio is now multi-cloud, so Carbon Black's multi-cloud, NSX is multi-cloud, VDLI's Horizon, the entire portfolio, basically. VMware Solutions, Working across multiple clouds gives you operational consistency. So with the same management and security controls across each of your clouds, and it means that your teams have the same skill set across each. Ordinarily, there can be lots of challenges when operating a multi-cloud environment with different SLAs, security controls, various skill sets and different management and security controls. Um, and they've got, and you have the complexity of your applications on top, so managing applications on different architectures. 
Having a consistent VMware platform in each of your clouds not only gives you operational consistency, but it also gives the developer freedom and consistent operations as well. We partner with AWS and we continue to build on our momentum with VMC on AWS, jointly engineering new innovations and services, which I'll mention more in a later slide. Our R&D and their R&D work closely, uh, which is why you'll be able to see the latest versions of our software on VMC first, potentially even before you can get that on-prem. Some of our other announcements, we acquired Datrium, which has enabled us to create VMware Cloud DR, protecting any workload on-prem or in the cloud, recovering from data loss, from ransomware, where you can remove the impacted machine and recover from your latest image. And today you can get this on VMC, but the plan is to take this to all the hyperscalers as we look to offer data protection as a service on any cloud provider. We continue to offer innovation on VMC with the new i3 Enhanced, which uh, now has 48 cores, 760 gig of RAM, but crucially it's got a big boost in the NVMe storage, which is now up to 45 terabytes. We announced you can have two uh, to host SDDC. So if you don't have the demands for three hosts, you can have a cheaper entry point into VMC and AWS, but it still delivers the same enterprise capabilities and resiliency of 99.9 uh, .9 SLA. And finally, we announced VMware Cloud Director Service, which delivers multi-tenancy for MSPs to be able to serve small to medium-sized enterprises with VM level with a VM level service. So if you just want a few VMs, you just want to consume on a pay VM basis, a service provider can now do that. We announced VMware Transit Connect, which can connect your SDDCs in multiple regions with your on-prem data centers. And one of the big Azure VMware solution uh, announcements made at the Microsoft Ignite event was AVS version two which is covering more regions, adding more by the end of the year, now all delivered by Microsoft, allowing you to use native Azure services. It's not only AWS and Microsoft, we're working with many more. Oracle are bringing more regions online. VMware Technologies operates in the same way as on-prem in each, uh, but there are different benefits to each. So there are Microsoft license and benefits for Windows and SQL and Azure, Google's leading the charge on AI and machine learning. IBM have got their data services and have integrated with Watson. We announced the second iteration of VMware Cloud on Dell. So this is particularly useful if you don't want to go to the public cloud, but you want the features of the public cloud to come to you and to be in your data center. If you want infrastructure as a service, you can have the racks filled with switches, Vela Cloud, servers running VMware software, all configured. All you do is plug it into your network, provide power and cool, and, and away you go, all with a service wrap. So SLA is laid out, paid as a subscription service. If you want to avoid tech refreshes um, and make someone else's, you know, make that someone else's problem, shift and capex to opex, you can get all the benefits of the public cloud, but on prem. And if you want to stop using it, we can pick the kit up and take it away. If you want to solve data latency or sovereignty, or you want to deliver applications with desktops, you can run Horizon and Kubernetes with TKG. We've enhanced the vRealize portfolio to work across all these platforms to deliver automation and governance, performance and troubleshooting, capacity and cost analysis for your multi-cloud environments, which will help you to increase your speed of innovation, um, improve control, and help you mitigate any risks, because obviously all of our stuff's configured to our best practices. To achieve this, we've announced VMware vRealize Cloud Universal, which is a full SaaS offering that has the option to deploy on-prem if needed. Um, and we've changed the licensing model to make it more flexible so that you can consume licenses on-prem or in the cloud. Universal, so this gives us the flexible license usage across private and public cloud, which is particularly useful as you may experience seasonal peaks in utilization. So scale out during peak times at Christmas for retail, for instance, now you'd have the same flexibility with your VRealize suite licensing. And as mentioned today, we can now have Tanzu running in vSphere. So it was already available for VCF and VMC on AWS, and we're currently in preview for Azure and Oracle. 
last year we announced Project Path, which was where we give our VCPP partners access to a common platform to be able to consume services from the public cloud. We announced that this VMworld, that that's now a reality called VMware Cloud Partner Navigator. If we look at our presence in the public cloud today, we have 70 million workloads in VMC and AWS, in other hypervisors, and with our VCPP partners. And we're the only vendor today with this presence globally. There are many announcements around digital workspace, as you'd imagine. So we think that the ideal digital workplace has three primary goals employee engagement, IT modernization, and zero trust security. It's a very crowded space, so there's lots of devices, lots of applications, a lot of management and security. And this is why we've spent time innovating over the years in building a digital workspace platform, which is Workspace ONE. Now you want to do device management, app delivery, access management and security and provide zero trust to any persona. It's one solution. So we've focused this year on security. One of the big announcements was SASE, which I'll come into in a moment. We announced Workspace ONE, security for VDIs, where we've integrated Carbon Black with Horizon. It's all agentless, so you don't need to install anything. Uh, you just need to license it and deploy the manager and away you go. And we've announced Workspace Remote Solution that works with Windows 10 or Mac, um, and where you can manage the security of all your devices using a single management console. And when it comes to employee engagement, we use Workspace One Intelligent Hub of VMware on our laptops and phones. There's nothing new about that. Um, let's skip this one. Now, we're pleased to announce that our day zero onboarding experience for new hires is now generally available. With the day one onboarding experience, newly hired employees get access to the intelligent hub from the time they accept their offer before the first day of work. Companies can use this to provide access to HR and benefits apps and guide new hires through tasks like picking out a laptop. Then on the first day, employees are going to see this expanded into the full workspace. This gives a great experience for your new colleagues, it helps IT get them everything that they need much faster than before, and also helps HR managers with their goals to keep new hires engaged from the time they accept the offer right up to their onboarding. VMware are leaders in bring your own device, so that's a key area for a modern workforce. And VMware announced another key feature for BYOD with the same, uh, with new time-based access controls and Workspace ONE. So if you want to provide access to certain apps during set shifts or users in regions with regulations covering working hours, now you're able to do this. Uh, employee experience is key. Now we've added SSO, self-service, pair app, VPN, et cetera, all natively for Windows 10. And when it comes to IT modernization, we've recently launched Horizon 8. With Horizon 8, you can run uh, on more cloud platforms. We have new optimizations for unified comms, and we've made instant clones even better. We continue to add features into the Horizon solution. And to help customers deploy their Windows 10 device, devices, we've expanded our factory provisioning partnerships with the likes of HP and Lenovo, in addition to the support that we've already had with Dell. We've increased the support for Macs. And we've also added support for enrolling Linux-based devices. We're the only company in the market that's currently doing all of these things. Now, managing all of this is tough. So on top of the Intelligent Hub, we've added issue management called DEEM. Digital Employee Experience Management, which will give improved visibility into Windows 10, iOS, Android Health, and App Performance with Mac OS coming soon. We've 
We've announced Freestyle Orchestrator, which create, lets you create workflows for Windows 10 and Mac OS. Later, we'll expand it across all of our platforms and integrate it into Workspace ONE. If you need to install things in a certain sequence um, or according to a script, etc. Now, let's turn to security. Now we have a dashboard for Windows and Mac, so you have a full vulnerability management from one interface. Today, we're a distributed workforce and a disappearing perimeter. Organizations are making use of a zero trust approach, one of their highest priorities. We have several updates to cover in zero trust and we'll start with authentication. If you want to have multi-factor authentication, this used to be separate as part of the VMware Verify app, but it's now being integrated into the Intelligent Hub. We'll also soon be providing uh, support for FIDO2 and web authentication, which enable customers to use USB, Bluetooth, NFC, security keys, or Workspace ONE access. Another key part of Zero Trust is that we're addressing the need for continuous risk evaluation and trust verification. Last year, we announced Risk Analytics, which is the ability to calculate user and device risk scores based on signals from Workspace ONE. Now we're adding dynamic login risk assessment, which takes in additional context around the point of authentication. So essentially, we'll be able to see what apps people are accessing and from where. As part of Zero Trust, you'll also need the ability to continuously enforce access policies as risks change. And with Workspace ONE Tunnel, we're able to terminate a session or ask a user to re-authenticate if there's something that we're not happy about. For many of us, the pandemic's changed how we work. Zoom meetings and working from home have become the new norm. I saw the other day that pre-COVID, only 4.6% of US employees work from home, and that by April of this year, that number was 62%, which is just a huge increase. The pandemic's accelerated these areas of your business, and as a result, VMware's response is to help you in managing a distributed workforce, securing our um, securing our private and public cloud and improving our analytics of cloud and mobile. So to summarize, there are five challenges facing us today. We need a solution that spans our environment and even goes beyond it from the data center to the edge to the cloud. 95% of people are working from home now, sending the traffic from home with the kids at home gaming, the threat from malware is greater than ever before. You know, we've got too many tools. Most businesses use hundreds of tools. There are too many silos, teams working in isolation, using different tools, and there's too little context. So we need to know our apps and how they behave and how to monitor them over time. We're the only company that do all of these things. So many companies do various parts. And um, this division that we announced last year, so. Uh, this year, we've announced the division is reality with a product to cover each pillar. Securing the digital workforce. So we announced virtual desktop workspace one security for VDI and security for remote solutions. And we announced SASE. So traditionally, we would send all of our traffic to our data center, hairpin it and do the check in there. SASE secures the data and traffic in a distributed way and spreads that security layer to the public cloud so we can offer security to the remote branch without this happening. The SASE refers to our secure access service edge solution that combines industry leading SD1 capabilities with secure access delivered by Workspace ONE. So this combined with uh, this is combined with the secure web gateway and firewall capabilities provide secure, optimized access for branch, home, remote users, so they can all work from anywhere. And these services can be deployed using the SD1, leveraging a unique global network of cloud service nodes or uh, SASE POPs, which is otherwise known. These services can be deployed using the VMware SD1 leveraging a unique global network of uh, cloud service nodes. Um, they can be deployed as a managed service or do it yourself. Um, so when an employee in Peru or China access their application, they're doing it with the best application performance while ensuring security. We announced carbon black workload. So if you have VSphere 7, it's agentless and available today. 
And we have some brilliant announcements around cloud workspace protection, including our new carbon black cloud module for securing Kubernetes uh, based on the technology from Octarine, which we, we acquired several months ago. Um, uh, we've been hard at work integrating into carbon black cloud. Our Kubernetes uh, module called Guardrails will address the policy and the configuration challenges that lead to so many of our container breaches today. And at VMworld, we announced that if you have vSphere 6.5 or above, you can enable Carbon Black for free for six months. So uh, try before you buy. If we look at NSX, traditionally we had micro segmentation, then we added IDS and IPS, and now we've integrated the last line to give us network detection and response. And we gave a lot of announcements regarding innovation. So we've got our X Labs, R&D, the Office of the CTO, which are all within VMware, all working on innovation. An announcement last year was virtual reality. So we are now piloting virtual meetings with VR. We managed to secure it all with Workspace ONE. And we have Bitfusion. Now I have this in my home lab at home. So remotely accessing GPUs over the network. So at VMworld, we announced the plugin for Kubernetes workloads so that they can also take advantage of Bitfusion. You may have seen many tweets on Twitter where people are creating cost-effective clusters at home on Raspberry Pis. And we now have blockchain, which is coming very soon. Now, as you'd imagine, VMware are looking at quantum computing. And everyone is talking about next generation apps and the hardware vendors are saying the same uh, next generation infrastructure. We're definitely going to need next generation infrastructure if we're going to be able to run these next generation applications. And one of the big announcements was Project Monterey. So this is a re-architecture of ECF. It leverages a new hardware technology called SmartNix to deliver the maximum performance, zero trust security, and simplified operations to VCF deployments. So simply put, a SmartNix is a NIC with a general purpose CPU, out-of-band management, and virtualized device functionality. So you'll now have two versions of ESXi running, one on your server and one on your NIC. If you've got VCF on your servers, this is like VCF for the smart NIC. So where you can buy today and it can install on your servers today. Now, first we get performance benefits by disaggregating the functionality between the hypervisors because we'll have one running on your x86 processor and one running on your smart NIC. Um, we can put the running of the network and the security features to the smart NIC and leave the x86 CPU to run your applications. Now, obviously, Biggest change here is that we now have ESXi running on a smart NIC. But because most smart NICs have an ARM based processor, we've had to port ESXi to ARM. So if we want to cloud scale storage and disaggregation, we might want to have some diskless servers or some servers with high disk density and we want to share them across all of them. Now we can. Or we might have bare metal, a bare metal use case where we have NVIDIA cards that we want to share. So any hardware device shared with any virtual machine, now we can. And lastly, here's some of the vendors that are supporting Project Monterey. And that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please do reach out to your VMware account teams. Thank you.